So data trees are quite confusing, so we're going to take a step out of the Grasshopper Canvas and talk about this in more of a visual format. So simply put, a data tree can be thought of as the data organization of Grasshopper, uh, and it's how we handle lists of lists. And it can be split into two basic parts. You have the list of items, which is what we've been dealing with up until now, and the items are the actual objects that Grasshopper uses that you operate on, whether they be numbers, text, meshes, bereps, points, whatever it might be, the actual objects are all contained within list containers. Um, and that's what we see here on the right in Grasshopper, a single uh, stream of data uh, with all of the items and their indexes. But what we've ignored up until now is this little thing in the upper right. That's called the branch path. And this can be thought of as the address of that list. And the branch path is always contained within these squiggly parentheses. Um, and as you get to different levels, they're separated by semicolons. And whereas the items are the actual objects, this branch path is more of the address. So if you were to, say, uh, be using an analogy of cleaning your room, um, if you have socks and clothes as actual objects, the drawer that you place them in would be the branch path. This makes more sense as we get to um, more than one branch. So here you see we've split our information, our items, into two different groups, two different paths. So as it branches up here to path zero, this list of five items, uh, its address is path zero. And you see that in Grasshopper on the right, we now have two lists contained within one stream of data. And when this starts to happen, you'll notice that you get this dashed line signifying you have more than one path in the information. And this allows us to have two lists stacked on top of each other. And the first list has address zero, and the second list has address one. This can get more complicated. You can add as many layers as you want. And here we realize that the path information starts to uh, carry more than just the single address, but it also carries it, uh, a parent-child relationship, which can be very helpful with nested logic. So for example, as we go from um, a one-level branch to a two-level branch, you see here that um, these can be thought of as the children of path zero. So its parent is path zero, so it'll begin with a zero in the first number, and then it'll append its own unique uh, ID. In this case, it goes from zero, one, and two. It always maintains path zero at the front. Same thing for the children of path one. It begins with one, and then so on. And each list always has its own unique path, because that is, at the end of the day, what the branch path is. It's the unique address of every list that you have. So here on the right, we see that it's getting a very complicated um, grouping of lists. But if you think about it in this way, it's uh, actually quite organized um, because there's a structure to it. And we call this the data tree because if you look at this um, physical form, it starts to look a lot like a tree where you begin with a trunk and with every branch, it gets more and more complex branching out like a tree. And in this analogy, the items would be the, the leaves of the tree. Uh, or the fruit that you actually want. Um, so once again, you have uh, two major components, the actual items, or list of items, which are the objects that Grasshopper operates on, and the branch path is simply the address of those items. It's uh, the way that we're able to organize all of this information so that we can have one constant stream. Uh, and this is important when you consider how Grasshopper actually works. So up until now, we've only dealt with what we call one-to-one -one type components. These are modules or are components that take one bit of information in and create one information out, one object out. So taking the example of a two-point line, if you input uh, points into A and B, it spits out a line. And this can happen with multiple um, items in a list. So in this case, it'll begin with item zero from uh, the first list and item zero from the second. So point zero, point zero, it creates a line between them. Then it goes on to the next item, item one and item one, creates line one. So that's still a one-to-one -one relationship. Two things in, two things out. Contrast that with a many-to-one component. So let's consider the polyline component that's going to create a line between multiple points. So Unlike the one-to-one -one that operated just on the first item, this is going to look at an entire list, an entire list of points. And if you think about how this would have worked if we just input a single long flat list, it would never know when one line begins and the other ends, because how can you separate between these two points? So if I want to reuse this component to create multiple unique polylines, I'm going to need to separate those points into chunks. I need to organize my lists. And I don't want to have to copy and paste this component a million times to make several uh, polylines. And that's why branching is important, because I can now feed multiple lists into this single component and have it spit out multiple polylines. 
So this ability to organize my data becomes critical. And this is just one example of a many-to-one component. And you really can't do much in Grasshopper without these. We've managed up until now in this tutorial session to avoid them, um, which is actually kind of a challenge uh, because they're so common. So knowing data trees is critical because it allows you to organize your data and leverage these many-to-one components. We also have one-to-many type components, which also require data trees. So if we consider this example of dividing a curve into multiple points, if we input two lines on the output, I want to uh, maintain that child-parent relationship. I want to know all the points that were that came from line zero, I want to contain them together. So Grasshopper will automatically create a tree structure. Um, it'll branch out from whatever started to separate, um, in this case, the points that belong to line zero will get its own uh, list, and then the points that belong to line one get its own uh, list as well, separated by the branching structure. So in review, the data trees are just the address of your lists because it's important to be able to have your uh, lists of information stacked on top of each other so that we can feed our data through our parametric models through our grasshopper scripts and have these components reuse um, uh, or repeat themselves multiple times so we have one-to-one -one components which are quite simple and then we get more complicated with many-to-one or one-to-many type components that um, require us to feed in uh, branches of information or return branches of information that we then need to manipulate. So it's critical that we understand how to uh, generate and maintain and keep our data structure clean through data trees. And that's what the rest of this tutorial is going to be on, showing what we can build once we start to leverage um, carefully crafted data tree structures.